In today's video, we're going to have a look at how to utilize nVelocity extensions to create new rendering variants that might not be available out of the box. In, in our scenario today, what we're trying to do is create this event list. So as you can see, this is just a search result widget. But as you can see here, this automatically tells you that this event is today or upcoming based on today's current date versus the event date. Out of the box, this wouldn't be possible by just using normal rendering variants. So what we've done here is we've actually created a custom and velocity template. So in my rendering variant, I can I've set here today's date, item date, and I compare which compares today's date to item date. And accordingly, if the comparison is one, that's past. Else if comparison is zero, it's today. And else if comparison is negative one, then it's upcoming. I first have to thank Baron for this because Baron helped me a lot when I was actually stuck with coming up with a solution for this. So shout out to him. Now, let's see the code. So what we've done here is I created a new project, a web project that I called it uh, Variance Velocity Extensions Date Time. And what I need to do is ultimately two things. I need to create an app config include so I went in and created an app config include. And what this has is just a configuration for my end velocity template. So it's configuration cycle pipelines, get velocity template renderer. And I created my processor, which is just the location of my current uh, processor. And I put, I patched it after the get velocity template rendering initialized velocity context. So I need to make sure that the velocity context is initialized and then my processor runs after that. Then I created a class that inherits from or implements the interface I get template renderers pipeline processor. And this template has only one function, which is process, which takes in an args. And what I've done is args.context.put and I just put here a name. So that's my definition or the name that I want to define my end velocity template. And I instantiated a new object of my class. If you look at my class, what it does, it's a very simple class. It has get today date, get today date string, get today time string, get today string. These are the four functions I have here, which are very basic. Date time dot now, date time cycle dot date till dot iso now date, uh, iso now date uh, again here for the time, but that's the time iso now time sorry, and iso now. And let's go back to my actual function here. As you can see, set date. That's the name I've defined here in my class context. So it's set date dot get today date string so i'm using a date string so as you can see i'm using this function and then what i've done after that is that set to today i did something that set a variable item date using the same thing date tool dot format item date and then i formatted it with this particular format just to be able to compare the two dates together and that's it. There you have it. Very simple, very easy to do. And at the same time, gives you a lot of flexibility. You can have other scenarios. I've created a lot of other variants as well. So I have my extensions here, my other extensions. So I have things like field tokens, like get link URL for uh, uh, get link text, get related services. This is something specific to my actual uh, project here. Get, get image source. So I was able to use all these just as extensions so that I can use them very easily uh, in if I want to have the hyperlink without having the full general link, if I want to do all the conditions for general link uh, before uh, retrieving it, whether it's internal or it's an external general link and so on. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed watching this video.